coming up on ATV News. Such a great guy, so happy to have him home. How the Galaxy welcomed a missionary home, social distance style. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Could the government be sending you money during the coronavirus pandemic? It is very boring. That's one reason to get kids back in the classroom. We'll show you two more. What are you doing without sports in your life? I'll show you how some people are filling the void. Does it feel colder than usual in Logan this week? I'll let you know if it's just you. All that and more, this is ATV News. So before a, a drug can go on and be tested in humans, it needs to be evaluated in animals. It is part of the investigational new drug application required by the FDA. USU antiviral researchers are putting on hazmat suits to work on a developing a vaccine for the virus and say is one of the most unique viruses they have ever seen. Welcome to ATV News, I'm Austin Elder. And I'm Shay Densley. Two students and one employee have tested positive for the coronavirus, according to USU officials. The employee has been off campus for at least two weeks. One student returned to their home out of state where they contracted the virus, and the other student lives off campus and has been self-isolating since contracting the virus. Scientists and researchers here at USU's Institute of Antiviral Research are trying to find a way to stop the spread of the coronavirus. However, researchers say the coronavirus is something they have never dealt with before. What is surprising about this virus is how rapidly it has evolved and spread around the world. I've been involved with infectious diseases for 25 years. This is probably my fourth or fifth time now I've been involved in an emerging disease, uh, developing vaccines or antivirals to it but none of them have moved this rapidly. The Institute says it specializes in developing animal models for testing antiviral agents and vaccines. They're being supported by a 2.5 million research grant from the National Institute of Health. The coronavirus is spreading through Cache County and around the United States, with numbers of ca confirmed cases and deaths rising. According to the Bear River Health Department, last week there were only four confirmed cases in Cache County. Now the number has almost doubled and is up to seven confirmed cases. The Center of Disease Control says the number of cases in the United States has almost tripled since last week from about 50,000 to 140,000. 2,405 people have died from the virus, up from 737 last week. The IRS said Monday that they will send out stimulus money to U.S. citizens within the next three weeks. President Trump signed a $2 trillion emergency economic relief package on Friday that includes direct cash payments and unemployment benefits for people and businesses across the country. Extra money goes a long way, especially in this time, and I mean, I'm excited for it. It's going to help our family a ton. The CARES Act bill includes direct cash payments up to $1,200 per adult and $500 per child under 17. Payments will go to single people who earned up to $99,000 and married couples with no children who made up to $198,000. The bill also includes $350 billion for small businesses. A Logan man is in jail and charged with causing $4,000 in vandalism damages. Kenneth Lee Piper was arrested Friday and charged with 11 counts of criminal mischief. Police are accusing Piper of vandalizing Mount Logan Middle School, churches, businesses, and cars during his hour and a half vandalizing spree on March 18th. The owner of the Island Market says he feels it might be a cry for help. This person's just feeling kind of hopeless and reaching out, so I hope he gets whatever help he needs. Police say security footage like this from the Island Market was used to help match him based off what he was wearing and confronted him at his home. Once police had a search warrant, they found matching clothing in his home. Piper's court hearing is scheduled for April 6 at the Logan City District Court. Governor Gary Herbert announced Utah K-12 schools will be closed until May 1st due to risk of COVID-19. Lisa Feinstein shows you how kids, parents, and teachers are adjusting to homeschooling. You're Pretty playing straight. Pokemon. No, I'm not. More video games fit into this family schedule now that they're homeschooling. What? These kids say they like the flexibility, but schoolwork is a little harder. Since you don't have a teacher, you might get confused, so you're not sure, so it takes you longer to figure stuff out than just asking. It's like not that hard to do it, but 
It's harder than usual. One mom says schoolwork at home can be a fight. It is insanely hard. He is not motivated at all. This classroom is normally full of kids, but because of health risks, they're learning from home. Now classrooms may be empty, but teacher schedules are still full. I have worked harder the past few days because getting ready to do everything remotely, you still have to plan. And I think last week I had a breakdown and I was just like, um, how am I gonna do this? Like how, how is this gonna be effective? In the classroom is where teachers say they want their students. I miss my first graders. Well, first grade is the best age ever. And so it just that makes me cry. They are so loving and so fun. Mueller says the classroom is a safe place. No matter like the education wise, like parents are counting on the school to be a daycare for them when they go to work, be a place where they get their breakfast and their lunch. And the parents? I'm looking forward to just having a schedule again and having life go back to normal. Lisa Feinstein, ATV News. Teachers say although it's been more work, they found a new respect for technology and plan to implement more when class is back in session. Lisa Feinstein joins us to talk about weather. That's right. A lot of rain this week. Full forecast coming up in weather. The current temperature in Logan is 47 degrees. We'll tell you what children in Cache Valley are hunting during the coronavirus outbreak. And why is there caution tape around your local city park? We'll show you after the break. Last night at high school, I tried Oxy at a couple of parties. I thought I had it under control. I didn't know it'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. Most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. We've had rain every day this week here in the Valley. National Weather Service says we'll have a wintry start to April in the Rockies this year. Heavy rain, snow, and below normal temperatures are shifting across the northern plains as a cold front moves through Friday. Thanks for joining me for ATV Weather, I'm Lisa Feinstein. With that cold front I mentioned earlier, let's take a look at the national pressure. So as you can see here, there is that pressure moving down into Utah, which is bringing those cold temperatures. Now these, this blue you can see right here is the mixed precipitation, while that white is the snow. So moving into the national radar. Now you can see through North and South Dakota, there is a big storm activity happening. Uh, they're probably getting hit with a lot of rain right there. And then down here in Texas, there's a little bit of the cloud activity where you can see a light bit of rain happening down there, as well as up in the Portland area. Utah looks pretty clear for the most part, but let's take a look at the state radar. So as I said earlier, Pretty clear for the most part here, other than these scattered little patches of some light rain, but there is this big storm happening up through Idaho and up north here, which is bringing us those cold temperatures. So let's take a look at that seven day forecast. So as I said earlier, the temperatures are a little bit colder than normal. The average 
temperature in April right now is about 59 degrees. And as you can see that the, uh, the high for today is 46 degrees and the low, which I have in there is 75, which it isn't, it, it's going to be about 24 degrees with a 40% chance of snow and rain. And then, so tomorrow we're going to have a high of about 40, low of 23, 40% uh, chance of snow and rain there. Friday, uh, temperatures are going to bump up just a little bit with sunshine and a low of 29. And then through Saturday, we're going to bring back some of that snow and that rain, 20% chance of that. And we're going to have a high of 51, so higher temperatures there. And then over here on Sunday, finishing out the weekend, coming through the week, we've got 40% chance of rain, high of 55, uh, low of 42. And then we've got some more of that rain in through Monday and Tuesday. So Monday, Monday, Tuesday, we've got highs of 54 and 53, um, lows of 47 and 48. So overall, pretty chilly um, with that weather coming through the whole week, lots of rain. And so now you're all caught up on weather. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Lisa. You can no longer take your kids to the public playground in Logan. The Logan Parks and Rec District has closed all of its playgrounds to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Late last week, caution tape was used to block off all equi playground equipment, including swing sets. You can still use the parks, walking trails, and open spaces within the city, but they, also, they, but they ask that you follow social distancing guidelines. Major corporation officials say they are hiring temporary and hourly workers to keep up with increased demand due to the coronavirus. Walmart and Amazon officials say they're hiring 100,000 employees nationwide. CVS and Dollar General, 50,000 employees. Pizza Hut, 30,000. And 7-Eleven, 20,000. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints missionaries can't work face-to-face -face for now. Nathaniel Gillis joins us from Arkansas to show how social distancing and health concerns with the coronavirus are changing the way missionaries work. These missionaries are spending more time studying because their mission president says they could have no personal contact. This role is to keep the missionaries safe, but they say they aren't too worried about themselves. I'm not personally nervous if I got the virus. I just don't want to spread the virus to anyone else. Due to the no personal contact rule, rather than knocking on doors, missionaries are sitting at home, video chatting and talking on the phone to people interested instead. But it's taken a toll on some of them. It was definitely tough to the fact of like, I want to be out there and I want to be able to teach and I want to be able to just be in the field. And with the increase of study time, it is easy to drift to thoughts of family. It was just a big thing for me to not to turn into myself and worry about what's going on at home or things like that, not just to turn in and to sulk in like my bed during studies and things like that. While most missionaries may be at home making phone calls to check in on people, this group goes to the mission office every day to help with mission office tasks. They say it is slow work, but fulfilling to know they are helping other missionaries get in contact with people potentially interested in the church. Those missionaries who have been reassigned to the Northwest Arkansas area are trying to make the most of the time they have there. They say they are excited for when travel bans are lifted and are using this time to come closer to Christ. Nathaniel Gillis, ATV News. To see updates on missionary work with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, follow the link on our Facebook page. While some missionaries are staying out in the field, some are coming home early due to corona coronavirus concerns. ATV's Lisa Feinstein shows you new airport guidelines for picking them up. Chartered planes brought about 1,600 missionaries serving in the Philippines here to the Salt Lake Airport due to coronavirus risks. Families disregarded social distancing, filling the parking lot and welcoming missionaries home with hugs. But one local family skipped the airport scene and decided to get creative in their own neighborhood. Yeah! Cheers, yeah! honks, and posters I give you a hug. I know. to welcome Elder Jack Taylor home from six feet away or more. Jack's coming home and we're so excited. He's been in North Carolina on his mission. Hugs were reserved for family only. I know that there's people. 
Okay, you do? Because of social distancing. It's kind of a bummer, but my mom has fashioned a makeshift escalator in our front yard. At first I was really, really sad, really disappointed, because the main thing he's talked about while he's been on his mission is the escalator. And he was so excited to come down and see everyone. But as has happened a few times over the past few months, my grief over that turned into gratitude that he was home. Pretty much my family just made it pretty amazing when I uh, got to my house, and so it was, it was great anyways. Friends and family paraded past including some special guests. We all came together and we thought, you know, Jack is a big Star Wars fan. What if we all got in costume and did a parade for him? One missionary says this was a better homecoming than she had. And I got to come down the escalator and it was super exciting, super fun. But I think that this is so much more unique and exciting because it was more intimate. Yeah. Salt Lake Airport says if you're picking up a missionary to head to the second level of the parking garage and wait in your car for your missionary to come to you. Reporting from the Salt Lake International Airport, Lisa Feinstein, ATV News. Teddy bears could help you pass the time during the coronavirus. Children have been spotting teddy bears in windows all over the world. This international trend made its way to Cache Valley. With some help from the Cache County Sheriff's Office who put it on their Facebook page. We just want to try to be a light in the darkness right now and try to give people, especially with children, something to do that's positive and it's kind of fun now that they can't be at school. Not only can you see teddy bears in windows, but in police squad cars. Parents say that this is a good way to get restless kids out of the house. Emergency responders rescued a man after being stuck 30 feet above the ground. Hireman Logan City Crews responded to a call of a man stuck in this cherry picker while trimming a tree nearly 50, near 50th South and Center Street in Hiram yesterday. Police say the machinery stopped working and would not descend. A second cherry picker from Hiram City helped the man down to safety. Emergency crews left the scene once the man was on the ground and they knew he was okay. Eric Price joins us for sports. Yep, that's right. Coming up, I'll show you how some people are getting their we'll sports get fix during the pandemic. I absolutely wish I would have had this group back then. And we'll show you resources Logan has for those struggling with infertility. They gave me Vicodin after my knee surgery. They kept prescribing it, so I kept taking it. I didn't know it would be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. <laughs> Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. Hey Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad? Do stars visit their friends? Look! Hey, you! Yeah, you! Getting that college education? What are you gonna do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else? Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts? Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you gonna make of yourself? What are you gonna make of me? After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. That was the women's gymnastics team at the SUU meet this season. Sophie Sullivan was the second Aggie to win freshman of the year, and Autumn DeHardy was the first ever Aggie to win gymnast of the year. Amy Smith was announced Coach of the Year by the Mountain Rim Gymnastics Conference on Friday. Later in the week, the conference announced Leighton Varnador, second team all Mountain Rim Gymnastics. Autumn DeHardy and Sullivan received Conference Co-Bean Specialist of the Year. 
and DeHardy was also named Co-Floor Specialist of the Year. Welcome to ATV Sports, I'm Eric Price. Those are the awards our gymnastics won for their stellar 2020 season, even though it was a bit short. Senior guard Sam Merrill received Senior Class Award, First Team All-American. Eligibility is based on achievements in the classroom, community, character, and competition. And you must be an NCAA Division I senior. Merrill averaged 19.7 points per game, second in the Mountain West, and is the fourth player in school history to surpass 2,000 career points with a total of 2,197 points. USU's athletic director John Hartwell says the university will lose about $950,000 from the cancellation of the NCAA tournament. The university will also lose about $600,000 should all spring sports seniors return to the school next year as the NCAA has given all spring athletes an extra year of eligibility because of the cancellation of their season. The Logan Country Club is changing its policy on student golfers. The Country Club is now allowing only members to golf on the course. Monday was the last day students were able to play on the course. This response is due to the spread of the coronavirus. The club says students will be allowed to play the, the course again this fall. Quarantine and bored. Many kids are stuck inside. Two Cash Valley kids entertain themselves in a unique way. I have my gloves on and I stick in my helmet and I come in towards the net and it's scored. Gearing up, these two brothers are ready for the game. The biscuit drops, and it's Trevor Richard with the initial grab. He scores immediately, knocking goalie Cody Conrad to the ground. The Colorado Avalanche is in the 1-0 lead after the first period and into the break. Cody Conrad steals the faceoff in the beginning of the second period, and he scores. The Dallas Stars tie it up. Looks like a brawl broke out after the second period, and Conrad shoves Richard out the way. Moving across the ring with the vengeance, Conrad scores and ends the game, 2-1 winning for the Dallas Stars. How are you sports fans spending your time now that everything is canceled? Some fans are resorting to sports video games to fulfill the athletic void in their life. Power on and play. Sports are out the window. Before Corona, <laughs> I'd say um, I'd play, I try to play at least probably like three, four times a week. Doing the opposite of sports in his bedroom, Napoleon misses. Anything you can run and just get your body going, like I'm, I'm about it. So. With sports like football and basketball being canceled, some fans are trying to get their fix through sports video games. He's at the 30! Playing games like Madden and FIFA have some gamers thinking about the past. I mean, it kind of sucks because like, it's still fun playing like on, on Xbox and whatnot with your friends, but it's not the same as sitting down and getting to actually watch a game. A sure penalty! Longtime FIFA fan Brian Williams likes the excitement and escape of gameplay. With sports fans, there's almost always a lot of passion involved, and so it's just, I don't know, it just feels good to kind of live vicariously through the players on the field or your favorite players and your teams. That's good, dude. Some fans hope sports will be back soon. Even with no organized sports happening, we still had a fair amount happen this week in the world of sports. Back to you, Austin. Thanks, Eric. Due to the pandemic, not all families have a safe place to go during an emergency. Two local organizations teamed up to solve that. Decorating with stuffed animals, team apparel and a mascot, RSL and CAPSA opened an emergency domestic violence shelter in Cache Valley. It's fully furnished and renovated for domestic violence survivors to escape. I love the opportunity to know we're giving families a safe place to live, especially in this uncertain time, and to give them hope and to show them that people care about them. The RSL Foundation donated $60,000 toward the house, which will be given to and run by CAPSA. Some couples struggle with infertility, but might not know where, what resources are available to them. I spoke to some women about their journey and what resources helped them. The CDC reports 6% of married women in the United States, aged 15 to 44, are unable to get pregnant after one year of trying. The Utah Infertility Resource Center provides support, education, and awareness for Utah's infertility community. One of the resources is the Cache Valley Infertility Support Group. We start off our group every month with a topic to help our attendees learn about 
um, something that'll help them. The Cache Valley Infertility Support Group meets here at 965 South, 100 West on the second Tuesday of every month. However, due to the coronavirus, next month's meeting will be held over Zoom. The moment they come, they always say, that felt so amazing. I feel so much better about the struggle that I'm dealing with. Lyon says common things she's heard are, stop trying and you'll get pregnant, or just relax, or you already have a kid, so why does it matter? But one woman says secondary infertility has been difficult. People think, oh, you already have a child, you don't need any more. And that's, it's not the case. Like, it's the same struggles, it's the same emotional roller coaster. Newswander developed a tumor in both her left fallopian tube and ovary, and both had to be removed. After meeting with doctors for years, her treatments normalized her progesterone and B12 levels, and she was able to have a son, and later, a daughter. She says one thing that can really help someone with infertility is... Be kind about it, um, and to be supportive when their friends or a loved one tells them that they're struggling. The UIRC also has counseling and educational consultations to help couples learn more about infertility. You can find a link to the UIRC website on our Facebook page. Quarantine, Netflix, and chill. That's how some people are spending their time social distancing. Brandon Dean joins us to show what some people have been watching. Because of the viral outbreak, the government has asked that you stay home. I talk to people who are using that time to catch up on their favorite TV shows. The Last Kingdom is kind of our late night binging series we're watching. We watch a lot of um, Parks and Recreation. Star Wars and Monster Inc. and Toy Story. I've been watching two shows really, like The Office, a bunch of those reruns, and then the new series I'm kind of hooked on is uh, Tiger King. In lieu of uh, all that's going on, we kind of started Gallivant again. Wow, I really liked it better than The Vikings because it's from the English perspective. That's just one of our shows that, like our go-to shows that we can have in the background. Everyone Joe Exotic hires for his private zoo is like a ex-con. It's a um, musical comedy about a knight who tries to go and rescue his ex-girlfriend from a king. Videography's great, the acting's pretty good, and uh, there's a little sex now and then, and that's good. <laughs> it's really interesting. It sounds kind of boring, but there's uh, meth, there's murder. Light and not serious whatsoever, and that's kind of what we watch before going to bed, more or less. I feel like Parks and Rec is just really uplifting. It has a lot of love in it and very little hate. I'm watching more news than we used to watch. I really have switched over to um, watching our local news. I don't actually watch news on television. I'll just read articles. I get the most through radio in my truck while I'm at work. Um, no, I'm just... Okay. What? <laughs> you tooted! I usually mute an hour to work and an hour home. So I basically have two extra hours to my, like for myself. We're big baseball fans, so that's been a huge um, impact on us. We used to go out more, go out to eat, and go to movies out in the theater. My commute now is my bedroom to my office, so my viewing habits have changed. Like two of Shameless, two of Galvin, Galvin. and then we'll go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, the number one show on Netflix is Tiger King, a documentary series about people who collect big cats. Reporting from my couch, Brandon Dean, ATV News. Thanks, Brandon. You know, I actually heard that Tiger King's super good. Been meaning to watch it. I heard that too. I haven't seen it yet, but I heard you can get a tiger for like 2,000 bucks. Mm -hmm. Wow. Crazy. Thanks for joining us on this edition of ATV News. You can find all the latest editions on our Facebook page. We'll leave you with some shots of campus.